I'm your host, Melanie Burnicle. Passion, purpose and determination is this designing duo's key driving force to strive for excellence and settle for nothing less. Here to share their journey today are our guests, Elisa and Lissandra. All right, so I wanted to sort of go back in time before we get into all the exciting projects you're doing now. But where did you see yourself when you were growing up? Like, obviously, you spent a lot of time together. Did you chat about when you were kids what you thought about what you'd like to do? Uh, not really. I don't think we ever thought we were going to do something together. No, I, I, I was adamant that I was going to be a police officer. Like, that was, that was my dream from ever since I was five. But, I, yeah, there's never been anything... No, it wasn't one of those things where, like we know we're going to do something together and, yeah. No. My, I mean, growing up, you were never like, I'm going to do no. this or I'm going to do that. I was never 100% sure. No. Like, you know how some kids just know what they want to do? Yeah. I traveled my feet in, I finished school, I went to uni for a semester, I then um, did personal training around my own business for a couple of years and then I obviously went into the police force but I probably got the idea She copied her. me. See, I, I was, <laughs> was going to do that from the beginning. I, I did my uh, year 10 work experience with the police um, so that was always my path and there was never anything that was going to stop me from doing that. Amazing. Yeah, and then you had your own journey. And what made you change, Elisa, going into the police force? Was it just... Um, so I ran my business, I think, for about three years and I, I, it was actually a very successful business. But um, I think, like, when you start going to bed counting, going, all right, four, three, two, one more set, one more set, come on, push, push, push. And you're like, this is not my life. This yeah. This not be my life. Um, <laughs> so I just had that realisation of, like, there's got to be more than just counting and, like, I mean, it was great, um, but it just wasn't something that I could see long term. And um, I think Lissandra, was, Lissandra did the travelling, so she did the Camp America and went to England and did all of that. And I, I kind of regret not doing that, but I think I had a boyfriend at the time and I started my business and I was like, I, I didn't really do that. And then she'd always wanted to apply for the police force, but I, yeah, it took me a couple of times to get in actually. So I actually beat her into the police force. So like <laughs> my lifelong dream. And then <laughs> so secretly when she's like, I'm applying and she didn't get in, I was like, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, then what happened is that I said it like two or three times and then I could tell her what was in the exam. So <laughs> she was above she, we were at the academy together um but she was just one course ahead of me we could have yeah. been the same course but we decided not to yeah so I, waited <laughs> a little bit. I mean really you should have waited but anyway um <laughs> but no having said that every week we would have to do the exams in the in the course yep and so after every exam I'd go <laughs> I mean, they were different exams. They didn't, they, they did mix it wasn't the exams cheating. up, you it know. Wasn't cheating, yeah. But it was like, right, I know that I have to prepare for this and that. So she benefited yeah. from it. I it did. was a nice kind of guideline as to what would be in there and, you yeah. know, the topics, but they would have different That's questions. <laughs> so no yeah. cheating. <laughs> Just sharing information. Yeah. <laughs> Just sisterly love. Yeah, um, exactly. And then, so with you guys, your mum was in a big influence for you growing up because she seemed like a bit of a powerhouse. Can you tell me a bit more about that? <laughs> yeah, mum brought us up, um, single mother, no family support, like seriously, like not a great upbringing, just, yeah, it was, yeah. Yeah. So when she found out she was having twins, it was obviously a massive shock to her, mm. no money behind her, no, no support whatsoever. But when we were two, she started her own business. Um, very ahead of her time for, you know, 30, yeah, something years ago, 33 oh. years ago, and she started a second-hand business um, trading baby um, furniture. So wow. she, she opened a store and people would come in and they'd obviously finish with their baby gear and she would buy it, she'd clean it up and then she'd sell it. Um, and okay. that grew into she started off with one shop and then two, two shops next to each other and then another shop. And, yeah, she grew that over... 20, uh, 22 years so I think we were fortunate enough well probably not at the time because we had to spend so much of our spare time there yep. um, but we we saw the back end of how small business works 
Yes. And I guess we also took away the the hard work and the dedication. The dedication it took. You know, we mm. would have to jump in her van and go around after school and she'd go to places and buy secondhand cots and then take it back to the shop and we'd have to clean it and stack the boxes yeah. and mm. yeah, I think at yeah, at the time it was certainly we weren't loving it, but no. <laughs> it definitely looking back on it, it probably instilled a lot of who we are. Yeah, hard work and yeah, strong we work are. ethic. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And then do you have other siblings as well? No. So yeah. it's just you know, yeah. there's a pet dog as well. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Only sisters can get away with that stuff. Yeah, I've got a couple of sisters, yeah, so it's it's always entertaining. Um, never a dull moment, that's for sure. Never dull. Um, and so before you went on to the block, were you doing anything with interiors, like anything within your mum's shop? Did that just yeah. come? No, yes, uh, yes. <laughs> I remember trying to be really creative at mum's shop one day and I would have been about 10 and I said to mum, I want to make you a sign. And I went into the shed because she had two sheds and she had all these tools and I found a piece of um, wood. Yep. And um, I remember etching, like etching or words like staff only or something like this and I hung, we hung it up where the curtains were, where people went allowed. And I remember that taking me a long time but I remember etching it, like, I don't know, with a chisel or something and a hammer and then painting Oh, I mean, that's creative. I know it's not interior design, but there was always that like, oh, what can we do to make something look better? Or yeah, I think before applying for the block, we were we'd both just done renovations on our on our homes, but ah, there were right. basic renovations, and it certainly wasn't. Um, I think maybe more so me than Lysandra at the beginning. I had a little bit more of a passion for it. A, a wallpaper. People come into my home and say, oh, it's so beautiful even though right now it's like so dated when you look back. But I definitely had that desire to make something look nice probably and I had that desire more so to get into the industry than Lysandra initially. Mm. Oh. But now I'm going back to the police force and I'm like, no, I want to start a career in this and it was something that I think grew on Lysandra. Yeah. Yeah. I find it's just nice how the dynamic, you know, like with Lysandra that you followed her into the police. Yeah, then, you know. <laughs> yeah true. There's that nice kind of trust there, yeah. though, which is just, I guess, a bond that you guys have as well. Yeah. We which try to get away from each other, but <laughs> it just doesn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. And do you find, say, when you see other siblings, that I think just twins, that you have a bit more of a, a natural connection? Do you ever... Compared to just a normal sibling? Just, yeah. If you see other people that are siblings, like, do you find... Probably because um, I think, like, even though we are so different because we yep. really are, like, we still, we can look at each other and we know what the other one's thinking and we yeah. probably think the same thing as well. Like, yep. that's just a, a natural instinct to have that ability to feel the same emotion or, yeah, it's the same gut feeling that we get that we share. I guess it's something, you're just more in sync. Like, we used to play netball pretty competitively and, just playing on the netball court, people would yep. be quite fascinated because of how we played with each other. It's like we didn't even have to think about it. We'd throw a ball and know the other one was going to be there. Mm. It was, yep. yeah. So I think that's probably the same in life as well. Yeah. Do you find that with your gut instinct that guides you into yeah. your career path? So much. Like yep. now we have learned to trust it and when my stomach goes like this in knots, I'm like, uh no yeah, I mean with six, it did take us a long time to we've always had that gut intuition but I think it has taken time to actually give 100% trust to that instead of doubting it so mm. uh, we have learned a lot of mistakes along the way and we have mm. and, and most of our mistakes have been probably because we didn't trust our gut instinct yeah yeah that's yeah I think sometimes like because I know on a creative level for me and there's one person and that gut instinct and you're like oh and you know when your stomach's in knots yep. you, everything oh, oh, oh. in the universe is telling you run yeah. other direction yeah. but then I had this oh come on Mel like yes. you, like you you know you you know how to do it dig in and keep going yeah. and sometimes you actually have to let it go don't you and well, have 
yeah, we were just having this conversation about, you know, we are so lucky that we have each other to bounce off of. Yeah. Um, sometimes I sit here and think, oh, God, it would be really hard to do something on your own or, mm. you know, like not have somebody. I mean, and sometimes, sometimes I guess that can be a bad thing because you might have one thing and you might be able to convince each other that it's going to be okay. But generally now it's like, if there's doubt in one of us, then, you know, like if Elise is like, oh, maybe, and I'm like, nah, or vice versa. It's like, nah, it doesn't go. We're trusting our gut. It's not worth it. So we are each other's voice of reason and, and, and each other's sounding board, and we do definitely acknowledge that that has its benefits. Yeah. So talking about, like, trusting your gut and moving forward, when you're adding, so you guys are just like, I just look at what you're doing and I think it's amazing. So you've got your interiors company, then you had your your uh, duo, and then you've got now the amazing, you know, beautiful, alive body. So with all these things that you're doing and you, you're you adding, you know, and you're growing, you're there rubbing your head going, oh, what am I doing? <laughs> it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> but when you do choose to add another layer and element into your business, yeah. can you talk me through the process? of what happens for you like when you get this idea or what's missing or the gut feeling and then you know how do you kind of say yeah it's the right thing to do to take a step forward and change well I guess um I mean I have a personality that it's like a dog at a bone and if I get an idea in my head that's it like there's nothing stopping me so yeah. I guess obviously the the transition from the block leaving the police force, transition from the block into interiors was one thing. But this new venture that we're on is a completely other thing. Um, and it's, I think it's, what it is, is it's never, I guess it's, it's that a, permanently dissatisfied syndrome. No, no, I think it's this underlying drive that yeah. we've always had to succeed or to do better or to do more. And I, I do think that that has a lot to do with our upbringing because we came from a single mum, we didn't have much money, we lived in housing commission growing up. Um, although we were surrounded by a lot of friends that were quite wealthy and we were always around people that had money because mum always made sure no matter what she'd send us to a good school and make sure that she surrounded us into around good friends and sport. sport and whole life. So I think where that comes from, that drive to always succeed, um, or to do more or to do better comes from that and yeah. it's something that you kind of can't turn off. It is. It's, um, it's, it's so, um, it's this feeling in your gut, which I have, we have every single day, where it's not that you've got something to prove but when you envisage how you, success is different for everybody, right, and success for me doesn't mean, rolling up in a Bentley. Success for me means creating this beautiful life for my family, having a dream property in the hills. And I think when you've got an idea in your mind of where you want to see your life and you visualise that every single day, mm -hmm. that is what keeps you going. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're massive believers in manifestation mm -hmm. and, and visualisation and yeah. just because we, I, we manifested the block. Mm -hmm. Like 100% before we even applied, we knew we were going to be on there. And I had already played it yeah. all out in my head that we were going to win. We knew yeah. from the second we we were watching um, the auctions one night eight years ago and they'd won a lot of money, right? And we were like, we looked at each other and we said, let's apply. Let's apply. And from that second that we made that decision, in our heart of hearts, we knew we would get in and we knew we were going to win the block. Yeah. Like, I don't know what it is. Yeah. Like, that was our yeah. opening line on our audition tape. We're released from a Sunday and we're going to be the winners of the block 2013. Yeah. Like, because we honestly like believed it. Yeah. <laughs> and, and there was nothing no. or nobody that could no. stop us from even to the point where we didn't actually get a phone call and I was like, no, that, no, no, that is impossible because I know we're going to win. And... I was like, but the cutoff says this day. And anyway, I'm, I ended up calling the um, audition production. Yeah, the production or the, the audition company. And I was like, 
how could this be? Like, this is not right. And she's like, oh, no, 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 no. We're, we're, we're delayed a little bit. And I was like, oh, good, because, yeah, now that makes sense. How can this be? Because I'm going to be on your show whether you like it or yeah. not. <laughs> so, yeah, I think um, when, whenever we approach something, um, if we get it in our minds, then yeah. it's all in. So and we're, we're, we're airy. <laughs> <laughs> when you say you've got it in your mind as well, because some people find it, I guess, harder to see in their minds. Do you have anything around your office which says, um, you know, like all, I, it's all yeah, all visual. It's part it's of your DNA. It's it, it's completely through your body. Yeah, I love that. I love that. So I guess that's a nice little note to everybody as well. Like if you can, if you can see yourself at the finish line, you'll work out how to get there. Yeah, that exactly. Way. <clears throat> and the thing is, so many people, well. It's not enough just to visualise it and, and, manifest, and it. manifest it. You have to put in the hard work, yes. right? Things just don't happen. You can't just dream money. You can't just dream success. You yeah. have to envisage yourself and you have to work out how you're going to get there. And you have yeah. to. we have literally worked our asses off for the last seven years since we finished the block, day and night for the last yeah. seven years we have made so many sacrifices our kids, you know, and our families have just, they have had to sacrifice along with us yeah. um, because you can't afford to sit back, not even for a day. You can't. Yeah. You've, you've got to keep going. And, and yeah, if you're not willing to back it up with hard work, then it's just going to happen. Yeah, I think a lot of the time people think, oh, you were on the block. How good. Like, mm. look at your life now. Yeah. Mm. But it's like, yeah, that was amazing, but it's, it was a platform. That's, that's right. what you did after the block because literally the second it stopped going to air, you've forgotten about your old news. Yeah. You know, so it's what you do with that platform, I think, that, yeah. yeah. I think a lot of people think that it's a, just an easy ride being on the block and then that's it. You no. Know? No. Uh, yeah, you're 100% right, I think, doing the work. But I think one thing that I've noticed like when you're chatting as well and you've got a really strong sense of purpose on the why you're doing something. Yes, and yes. I think that purpose yes. when it's when it's something good, yes, you know, rather than I just want to be rich or I just want to be this. Like it's it's for the greater good of your families yes. and a beautiful right. purpose. And yep. also, you're doing something that you're loving. Yep. So even though it's hard work, and some days when you have your own business, you have got your head between your legs and you're like, <gasps> totally. We don't ever feel like we're when we're at work. We never feel like we're at work. Oh. Uh, my husband's had two weeks off. And I've been in the office, I get up early, I do my exercise, I get into the office really early and I leave late and I freaking love it. Like, <laughs> it's sick. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I love it because it's not, a, it's not a single day of work. I mean, there are things that you're like, oh, I want to palm this off because I hate this. This is not, you know. Yeah. Weird. What, what would be one of those tasks that you know someone else is better off doing? Oh, like inventory. Um, liaising with suppliers. Um, You're going to regret you asked that question. Oh, it's like there's certain parts of especially with our live business that like I'm like, oh, my God, this is my calling. I could do this. Product design, um, yep. strategizing, marketing. Implementation. Implementation. Well, no. I like creating the ideas. <laughs> she yep. likes someone else to do it. <laughs> but I just don't like getting bogged up in the stuff that I don't need to be. And right now because we've obviously had to wear so many hats for the last two years, yeah, we and, have to. And on top of that, we're also we are still running another business on the our interiors business. So, yeah, I think um, having to run two businesses at one time, and obviously we're a startup with a light body, so we don't want to have to get too many people into help at this point in time because that's just not what you do. You, yeah, you need to put in the hard yards and then get some money behind you in order to be able to do that or um, do further product development. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I, I think now we're probably finding it, well, now I am probably the hardest Yeah, it has been because of trying to juggle. You know, keep, yeah, trying to juggle both businesses. Yeah. So let's just talk a little bit more about Alive because I love everything about this. Um, so it's only, it's really new to market mm -hmm. and you guys have just done, considering what's going on in the world at the moment, you guys have just done like an amazing record month <laughs> um, like with your sales. It's yeah. so exciting. Can you, like, I just think obviously you've got so much respect, you know, from your following as well. And then 
but it's just it's insane in this it's climate. Mind blowing. Yeah. When, when we first thought of this idea eighteen months ago, I I knew it was going to take off. And I know in the next two years it's going to be something even bigger. But um, I didn't think it would take off quite as well as it has. Like it's been just absolutely, like, amazing. That's um, so great. I know. I mean, initially we were like, oh, my gosh, we literally have put in 18 months of hard work and we're about to launch a business when, you know, COVID. The world's crashing. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my gosh! Like, what a, like, are you serious? We we're like, do we just hold off? Do we just wait it out? And then we're like, no. And then we were kind of, well, really, I guess if you are going to launch a business during this time, can you really? Well, other than hand sanitizer, can you really think of? Sorry, she's just. We're like monkeys. We. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love that. Oh, I used to remember mum chased me around with the tissue. <laughs> um, yeah, so it was like we were, yeah, could we really pick a better product to launch? <laughs> well, I think as well because everyone's at home. So yeah. they want their home. Their home is everything at the moment. Their home it's is the restaurant. It's their, it's their day spa. Yeah. Um, your home is everything and what better yeah. thing to have in it is something beautiful that's yeah. great Absolutely. for you. Um, and luxurious, and you know. And they can justify it at the moment, can't they? You know, we need to wash our hands. They can just touch our husbands. <laughs> yeah. Can you? Can we talk about some of the like the actual amazing ingredients that you've put into the product? Because I'm allergic to a lot of stuff, and I've had to move a lot more into. Um, away from the chemical side of things so what you've done here like for me is super exciting and I use all natural and especially at the moment we're washing our hands all the time all the time so yeah. what made you want to move into a beautiful natural style of product and well I think everybody's expecting more out of their products these days um there's so many unnecessary chemicals that go into the products we're using and I just don't think that people actually even realise. So when we sat down with our formulator, we gave them a very specific brief um, and we went back and forth and, um, yeah, we've ended up with something that, um, yeah, is nice and gentle on your body and your hands and um, smells amazing. Smells great. <laughs> um, which is obviously important too. We, we, did, we did take some time out to actually speak to people and, find out what they wanted, how important is it to be completely natural and as well, as you would understand, to be completely natural is very, like all natural is very hard if you want shelf life as yep. well. But it was finding that balance as well um, and also listening to people, would they prefer it smelling nicer or would they prefer it being 100% natural? So we found that balance and we worked really hard with our formulator to do that. I think one, the most important thing, one of the most important things for us was not to use palm oil. So it did take a lot longer, the formulation side of it, because we were trying to source products that would enable us to not use palm oil. And then mm. when you don't use palm oil, that also affects um, other ingredients. So yeah. and obviously that does come at a price too. So it was finding that balance of that price point as well. That, yeah, we But we're really proud to, to develop a product that doesn't use palm oil. And there are a lot of products out there that say, you know, we don't use palm oil, but they use, well, it's coconut, it's derived or So you can never really trace back. Um, and this is the hard what, thing. This is where consumer gets really confused. Yeah. And I think when you're clear... And then, you know, again, that goes straight back to your brand. Like it's it's honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, we, we've been, I mean, the feedback about the product has been absolutely amazing. And, yeah, it's something that um, we didn't think people, like when you're developing a product and you're like, oh, my God, people are just going to be talking about the actual product and how it looks and, yeah, it's almost been the other way around. It's like it smells divine and it feels divine and I had sensitive skin and I use it and I don't. And, yeah, it's yeah, it's been something that uh, has been, yeah, unexpected from my point of view anyway. Yeah. And can I just say, like, the actual packaging itself, how much did you have in designing that? Because oh, yeah, I love yeah. that the inside's good for you, but the outside, beautiful. 
Yeah. That, that was the whole uh, premise of why we started a lot because we were uh, we were doing a project in Albert Park and we came to selling our bathrooms and we were like, what's out on the market that isn't your typical shea bottle, brown bottle? Yeah, and yeah. they're chunky yeah. and... Yeah, and just sort of uses the same just shea bottle. stock standard yeah. brown bottle. We just wanted something a bit different and we couldn't find it. And that's where Alisa was like, she rang me up and she goes, let's, let's make a hand soap. And I was like, no way. Like, we're not going to be able to... I, I was. I was like, we're not going to be able to compete in this market. Yeah, because it is a busy market. It. It's saturated. And I remember sending her a message saying, can we do this? And she was like, no, it's saturated. And I was like, mm, tell me no and I'm going to show you. And so I worked on it for about three months without telling her. <laughs> well, then she came back to me with the name as well. And I was like, oh, my God, I, I think it was more the name that kind of got me excited. Yeah. But from where we were with that initial idea to where we are now with the bottle is something completely different. Like you should see our first our prototypes, prototypes <laughs> from where we are now. Like that was developed. And I guess aesthetically because we are designers, that was at the forefront. Yeah. Like that was mm-hmm. that was that was how we were going to disrupt this market. Exactly. We yeah. needed to disrupt the market. We didn't want to come in and just do another typical brown bottle. We wanted to disrupt the market and... Yeah, so the, the whole process was is, was very, very intensive. We looked high and low to see if there was something already, a mould that was produced that was something a little bit different. It wasn't. We then went to an industrial designer and we we drew we, we drew the initial concept on SketchUp, which is a project we use for our interior design. Oh. And we got one 3D printed and we're like, mm, it needs shoulders on it. So then we got... Play Doh, and we put the shoulders, and then um, they painted it in black. Yeah, so that you could see it all blended. And then we said, "Oh, we like this shape. Can you draw this up?" He drew it up. Went back and forth. That was a massive pro- process. We then got a, um, a mold made, a tool made. They sent us prototypes, and we're like, "Shit, the shoulders aren't quite right." And people are like, oh, well, it's okay, it's fine. And we're like, mm, it's not perfect. It's not perfect. Yeah. So then we paid another X amount of dollars to have the tool remade that set us back probably three months. And wow, three months. Months. And, yeah, the, the, final, the final tool was, yeah. Look, and I think there's something nice about that interlocking system kind of it represents yeah. kind of us as well to, to a better than one and yeah. story together and side by side, yeah. Oh, <laughs> virtual hugs, guys. <laughs> but that's just, it's really nice. I think, every, like, again, everything that you seem to do, there's purpose and there's a reason behind what you're doing. Yeah. Um, and I just, I think it's great. And I think that's where a lot of people miss the mark within their businesses. And it's like they just don't have that alignment, that purpose, and the good behind it. There's like, you've got Absolutely. to know. That. And I remember sitting on the beach and I was um, coming up with names and I was writing them in the sand. And we've always, especially me, I think, has had this just a love for nature. I just, every time I can escape to nature, I will. It's just something that makes me feel, I don't know, grounded and centred. Yeah. And when, we were, when I was writing the name, I was like, what's a play on obviously our name? But... We've always talked about wanting to give back and we've always come up with ideas of maybe we can one day go overseas and help build a, a community and, a, you know, we've always talked about it. And I was sitting there and I was like, what can we do for this business that is going to give back? And I thought, why not give back and we can plant trees? And then the idea came into our head, why don't we plant a tree with every product that's purchased? And I think maybe that's also the, the name that is so fitting is because we want to help keep the planet alive and trees are so important to this entire planet. And yep. it was funny because we were, with the whole tree thing, we were looking at overseas and then the bushfires happened. Yeah. But then we, we had to rejig some things and find a, a charity that we could align with that would plant trees in Australia because oh, for us amazing. that's important after everything that we've been through as a country. So yep. we did have to rejig that. And we are paying more per tree that we plant. But for us as a brand, that meant more being able to, being able to help our own country 
um, yeah. get through this difficult time. Yeah, so hopefully we've, we've aligned with One Tree Planted and they obviously, they're a, they're a US company, so they've just found a, another um, charity to align with here. So hopefully oh, once this is all great. over, we can actually start getting our hands dirty and, and we actually really do want to be in the back end of this and our goal is to plant a, a live forest. Um, I love that. Today we've, um, we're up to 2,000 trees. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah, so hopefully, you know, within the next couple of years, it's just, yeah. Yeah. Imagine having your own forest. That's pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> That's something you wouldn't have been thinking of when you were kidding. No. <laughs> we are going to have our own forest. Yeah. Yeah, it's so beautiful. I um, just recently was in the country helping mum and dad on the farm for a couple of um, weeks because mum was a bit sick over Christmas and they couldn't afford in this environment to have someone go up. So I said, look, I'm not working. I'll come up and give you a hand. And so um, just driving through the mountains and seeing the devastation from the bushfires, like I don't know how much our country at the moment could take. We had the droughts, which at Christmas time we had to pump water from a bore, take it over the hill to feed the cattle. The cattle was skin and bones. There was It was literally a dirt paddock. And then they've had all this rain now. Um, so then we had the bushfires after the drought. Um, thank God we, like our property was fine. But just driving there the other week, it's just like so I'm driving and crying at the same time because it's the first time I've driven up through there because at Christmas I had to fly back because the roads were blocked. Um, so I was just in tears like trying to drive on the swervy road going, this isn't very safe. Um, but then I noticed a couple of things in the green after the rain. It was sprouting. It, it was, I just, I wish you were allowed to stop and take photos right now. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't want to be, you know, arrested or fined for going in the wrong direction. Um, but it was just to see life yes. come back. Yes. Just with a little bit of something. Yeah, it does. And I think, um, that, that is really exciting to see that. And But I think mm. the devastation comes from the animals and the biodiversity and, and yeah. that's what's going to take the time. Do you know what I mean? Trees do grow back. Yeah. Uh, animals that have been wiped out or some, you know, extinct. And that's what's going to take the years to, yeah. to get back. So, you know, trees are great, obviously, for emissions and to bring down greenhouse gases, but the biodiversity side of it is, as well, I think, is equal as, equally as important. Mm. I wonder as well, just like looking forward, because I don't think after the bushfires we've actually had much time to we've yeah. gone into we've gone into yeah. the COVID experience. Yeah. And so it'll be interesting mm. to see soon. You know the actual. I don't think people have been able to get out and see. Yeah. Like they know that there's a lot of things being lost within the biodiversity and animals, yeah. but yeah. we we haven't actually been able to get back out into yeah. yep. the wild. Yeah. <laughs> and it's been a rough year, hasn't it? Oh my God! And you know what? I feel grateful. You know, look, I'm live in the city. But I see what family have gone through, farmers have gone through, and it just breaks your heart. Yeah, and the fact that country towns that they yeah. have, we've just gotten over the bushfires now, let's get everybody back and start spending money. Oh no, yeah. sorry, you can't. Yeah, I believe our borders well, just... closed. So that's like there's just so much devastation in all of this. Um, yeah. But. You know, you know that you guys are doing something great, though, you know, and then, you know, you quickly pivoted when you realised the bushfires and then you've done yeah. something here. Yes, yeah, it was very important to us. Yeah. 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 I think we're, that's we're actually business. looking at planting in Africa initially because you can get so much more, you know, <laughs> for your money. Um, yeah. But, yeah, as soon as it, uh, this hit in Australia, we were like, no. Yeah. <laughs> Just doesn't feel right. <laughs> yeah. My love, you've got, you know, you created a beautiful product with all Australian ingredients as well. It's all, you know, you making the product here as well. Like, you know, what you're giving back as a, you know, to the greater community as well as delivering a great product to consumer is just really commendable. Thank you. Thank you. Because, yeah, I know how hard it is to do something like in Australia as well. Yeah. But, you know, I've seen friends do it with their fashion labels and things and it's, yeah. it's hard. Wow. You know, like business here is hard but the yeah. fact that you're like, no, we'd rather... Yeah. Have you know the right yeah. um, the right go behind it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So um, now a couple of other little things. What would you say? Like, is there any time that you could talk about just to help some of the audience? Um, 
sort of go into a bit of a resilient mind mindset like is there anything that you've been through where you've just literally had your head between your legs going I can't breathe like <laughs> any of those moments and that you know your process of how do you get to that next step and, and move past the fear or the rejection or the stress of that situation I personally think that um, we are where we are now because of all the mistakes we've made along the way. Yeah. Um, and when we make a mistake now compared to when we made it earlier, we see that as um, just another kink in the chain, really, just another hurdle to overcome. And you come out stronger on the other side. There were lots of things that we learned from the design duo and buying property at the wrong time. Like there was so we we kind of did just jump into that blindsided and the results didn't pay off for us in the end. We produced a beautiful home, but financially it wasn't there. So now we've gone into Alive looking at it a bit differently. So we don't look at that as a mistake. Yes, we at lost. At the time though. Yeah. At the time. Was, my God. My God, that was the worst time of our lives. Like we invested wow. all this money. Like so much money. And yeah, like Lasana said, we bought at the wrong time. We unfortunately just went through some bad experiences and yeah but and I think yeah it's, it's just about learning from that correcting it next time you do it yeah. and overcoming it that way so now when something hits us or there's a you know a roadblock we definitely handle it a little bit differently because we're like well that happened for a reason yeah. and We've got to learn from that. And I know that does sound a bit lame and cliche. You've got to learn. You've got to fall to, um, you know, rise from it. But, yeah, I think, if, I think if you reset your mind and there are so many things since the block, so many people we've met, so many situations and time and effort and money that we've put ourselves through. And at the time you're like, this has caused me so much time, stress, pain. Why? Why me? And then down the track, you go, that's, that's why. why. I met that person because they taught me X, Y, Z, and I learned this from them, and now I'm implementing it here. So I guess when you hit that poor me or that roadblock, you're like, this is just teaching you a lesson, and it's, it's saying you're not meant to go down this path, you're meant to go down this path. And I think everybody in business will experience that. And if you're not, I don't know. You're not. You just, you uh, will. You will. You will. And, yeah, I think it's. Just about preparing yourself that that is a part of the journey. Yeah. And when you do become, when you, yeah. I mean, we've hit a roadblock recently and it's like, right, past experience have taught us that we need to do X, Y, and Z to get over this. So it's all about preparing yourself for the future, I guess, and not not letting that impact you too much at that point in time because it can, and we're, we're guilty of it. We've let it literally consume drown us. us and consume us, but I think we've now been through it enough to yeah, know that it's like you do come out at the other end and you come out better. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think as well sometimes with even what's on social media and, and things that are out there, the expectation of things are A to B and there's your line. Yes. And yes. the reality of life, yes. the takeaway business is, oh. you know, it's this. Oh. And I think the more people start to see that yeah. that is the journey. Well, rather would you than- rather that be your journey? Like, wouldn't you most, most of the time? <laughs> I'd say 80% of the time. <laughs> if you don't have that, then you don't have that. It's so true. You know I mean, and it is so true. I'm like, yeah, sometimes I'm like, would I, would I want to be born into money? No, no. Why? Because that means you haven't ever experienced to experience this. Yeah. And I quite often think if someone said, here's a trillion dollars, and other than obviously having that money and doing very good with it and making sure that, would I want that personally? No, no, because you know I wouldn't have appreciation or satisfaction for anything. Like hands down, hundred percent. If someone said, "Here's a trillion dollars," there goes all your joy, there goes all your passion. What other than obviously being able to help people, which yeah, you know, if so you put that aside, put that aside. Yeah, if you just got handed everything on a silver platter, you would not have that feeling that you get where you're like shit we did that well that sale just came through yeah. yeah that's because of our hard work we did that that gratification yeah. of going our hard work has paid off yeah um so yeah without like I just said without experiencing the hard times you just don't have appreciation for the good times yeah I think that's really yeah really true and just allow yeah. yourself to process that up and down 
It's a bit like Hollywood movies, right? You know the whole love story? I just think that's bullshit because people watch that and they think that's how life is. Oh, and it's like Instagram and they see all these people, oh, I made $200,000 in my first month and I did this and I did that, and they're not actually showing you the actual experience behind it. It's just setting everybody else up to fail and feel shit about themselves. Yeah. You know? So I'm going to teach my kids not to watch those romantic love stories because that's not life. Yeah. So Moana's not real. <laughs> I'm the Disney girl. I still, if I've had a crazy week, which I haven't had for a while, but look for the Disney film on the. Not that young. Not that young. Not that young. Like, for a while. <laughs> you know, like the Notebook shit. Yeah, the Notebook shit. Like just all the happily yeah. ever after, and like, ugh, ugh. Yeah, it's it's true though. I think you know. I don't think I've ever been in a relationship that's people like, hey, exactly. Yeah, no, it's not hot for me forever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! So I look, I'm just running through all my like questions and things, and there's a few things, but I think we've kind of answered so many of them on our great journey today as well. Um, one thing I did want to sort of say is, you know, oh, like your character strengths as individuals. Could you list your top three for each of you? Like what you think your top character strengths might be that you bring to your partnership. Mine certainly is never giving up. Yeah. And if I don't know something, I'll learn it. Yeah. And I never stop until I at least know how to do something to get us to the next point. Um, yeah. Which I guess sometimes being the personality type that I am, a bit controlling, yeah. a bit like, it's got its bonuses, but it's also got its, you know, negatives as well because it means that I can just never relax. It means that I can never, you know, I'm always, always switched on. Um, yeah. yeah, I think that's where we complement each other in to a certain extent is that she's like that all the time. Yes. And if we were, if I was like that too, then it would <laughs> And I'm probably more down here, I'm more of the re- well, relax, probably a more easygoing. But if she was like that, then it wouldn't work either. Yeah. So I think we definitely have um, strengths that balance each other out because if we were both the same as each other, it, yeah. it would be a nightmare. Yeah. Um, another strength. Yeah, I think mine would have to be the same, not, you know, never yeah. up and just willing to put in the hard hard work, get your hands dirty. Yeah. Um, but also maybe just trying to think other than just being just completely determined, um, uh, motivated, just that desire to just strive for more and yeah. not, never settling, never yeah. just yeah. never just being satisfied with no, you can't do it, always yeah. finding a way. Problem solving is... I problem solve every single day. Yeah, Liz is really good um, at problem solving. And, yeah. I think yeah. that's a really key thing as well because I think when people do get roadblocks, sometimes a level of fear may come in for them and they just, yeah. okay, great, or, you know, they get, might get that, you know, that oh, I'm not good enough or this has come up and, oh, okay, I'll take a step back. Yeah. But if you've got that problem solving and rather seeing something as a jigsaw puzzle and you're just there to find the solution, yeah. so changing that mindset yeah. rather yeah. than oh, this is telling me, you know, like the different, the gut feeling doing this says no. Yes. Yes. But if something's doing this and it's just a hurdle, yes. right, okay. But there is always a solution. There is always a solution. Yeah. Um, you just have to find it. I love and quickly it. as well. I yeah. think being on your toes and being able to, to yeah, dodge yeah. and then get back on the right track is, yeah. You know, after Albert Park was a bit of a flop, as in we had to sell and lose money on it and it wasn't, you know, the ending that we were hoping. I look at that and I go, Okay, so if that was a success like we'd have hoped, we would have jumped straight into our next split and this wouldn't have happened. And I remember allowing myself a week 
just to be in, it took over my body just feeling absolutely sick about the work and the effort that we put in and it should have been we bought it prime time and we sold in the worst time and we needed to get rid of it and I think that happened because that wasn't our journey that happened and it literally the minute it happened we could have sat there and felt sorry for ourselves but bam on to the next thing straight away my husband's like you promised that you would have a break like this was meant to be like it for a bit can you just relax and yeah. I'm like no because the work's not done I, yeah. I sold my house to fund my side of this business wow so it was that thing of like pick yourself up yeah we're already in debt but hey I'm going to sell my house and potentially be in more debt but it's I guess not having that frame of mind and going no I believe we believe in this so much that I'm prepared to sell my house yeah and rent somewhere and invest that money into the business so yeah I think we just we knew it from the very start and it's been a very exciting journey so far and it's just it's been mind-blowing really it's the same feeling that we had when we did the block and we knew knew that we were going to win that there is nothing that will get in our way yeah to make this successful like it is already but I mean in the next years there are massive massive plans for this company and I know you can't give too much away I'm assuming but you know does that mean there's um opportunity to expand the range (laughs) Yeah, for sure. I mean, that's something that we're always working on. Um, yeah. And, I mean, product development takes a long time mm. and it also I, takes a lot of uh, money. Yeah, capital. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, finance. No, but, yeah, so, so that's our next. Obviously, yeah. we've launched this and it's like, right, what next? Let's, yeah. So that's yeah. where our focus is now and that's that gets the fire in the belly again. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I think you need that fire in the belly to keep going, especially, yeah. you know, when you had your ups and your downs. Yeah. And when you get that, it's like, okay, come on. Yeah. 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 It's exciting talking to you guys because I see that. Like, and when you start to talk about it, you get the, (laughs) you can see it in people. And that means people can feel it. And then that's what the product's delivering as well, which you're living and breathing it. So it's just amazing. Yeah. I'm excited, I'm very excited to see, you know, what comes. Yeah. Rain. Oh, we'll have us back in a couple of years. That will be exciting. Uh, <laughs> yeah, most definitely. <laughs> you might be older and have more grey hair, but, you know. <laughs> uh, at least hopefully the hair salons, well, I'm just too scared to sit there for six hours. Got to get rid of that, the dark roots and the grey, but I'm trying to see. Yeah, you know, you're that colour. It looks like it's meant to be like that. Uh, yeah. Babe, do you know how long it took me to try and get? And I was like, I just give up. I was like, it's going in a ponytail. I was trying to bring it forward so you could hide the grazing. And then it was hanging in my face, and I looked like a shaggy sheep dog. I'm like, mm. you know, she's going back in a pony, and she's going to have to do. We'll stick the glasses on to hide, you know, the frown lines, and we'll be good. <laughs> so I'm like, you have to excuse this because we thought it was a podcast. That was- it wasn't going to happen, so um, we didn't really come yeah. prepared. You're lucky you're both beautiful without a scary of makeup. Natural beauty is like your brand. <laughs> oh, Now, just to sort of wrap everything up with the interview, um, if I could do a little one-minute Beauty Boss Business beauty quiz with you. <laughs> Who wants to go first? Oh, look, we'll just jump in. Okay, great. Fun and games. <laughs> All right. So, uh, favourite beauty campaign of all time? I really like that one by Dove about the the real the real beauty or the real. Bo- uh, yep, I know the one, the real women and the real women, and they had all different shapes and sizes and colours. I just thought that that was yeah. I don't know why this one sticks in my head, but you know, you know, the, I said it to Elisa earlier. I was like, yeah, I like that Nicole Kidman, you know, with Chanel number five. Yes, you know yes. That? A couple of well, yes. years ago now. I don't know oh. that. Yeah. What would be your favourite beauty product under twenty five bucks? Uh, under twenty five. Well, can you buy anything? <laughs> I like um, uh, the L'Oreal telescopic. I think it might be a little bit. It might be twenty six dollars, but um, yeah, you know, for a good cheap Great mascara. It's such it's a good. Brilliant. Yeah, it, it's. Yeah. Um, Can I ask, do you like it as well? Because when you have to wear glasses, it's got such a great wand on it that you can actually um, get it onto your eyes without poking them in the eyes. <laughs> when you, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I love like the wand on it. <laughs> um, I think mine would be Revlon um, brow pencil. Yeah. Winds in and out. 
Yeah, I know the one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I know the one. All right, and your favorite beauty product over 25 bucks? Mine would probably be a mascara again, the Kevin, I don't even know how to say it. Kevin Aquan? Maquan, Maquan, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. That, so both of them are mascaras. Oh, one's that's, expensive and one's That's cheap. my favourite mascara. Um, yeah. But, oh, I can't go past my MAC eyeshadow palette because I use it for my eyeshadow, my blusher, and my yeah. highlighter. I love it. Do you use it in your brows too? Yes, even the dark ones in my brows. <laughs> literally, if I'm travelling and I, I just literally take that palette and it's got everything in it. If you had to choose a shade of lippy as your favourite, what would it be? I'd be red. Uh, my go-to, you know when you're feeling a bit ugly and you need a little bit of... I reckon as soon as you put red lipstick on, you feel glamorous. You yeah, do, mine, don't you? Yeah, mine's probably more of like the nude pink. Do you have a favourite beauty icon? Can you go past Marilyn Monroe? I know that's so generic. I love her. Like, oh, mine would probably be like Audrey Hepburn or she's classic. some kind of classic beauty like that. Whenever she's, I see her, I'm like, oh my gosh. She's classic. But you know, Marilyn Monroe, I just think like she was voluptuous, she was like curvy, but she was still just sexy. Oh, yeah. I don't know. She had the va va boom. She did, and you just yeah. don't see that in supermodels these days. Not that she's yeah. a supermodel, you know. I don't, I don't believe you. Favorite hair cut or color that you've ever had? Well, before this, well, yeah, no, I, I went light there for a bit, and I really liked that. Probably at my. Yeah, I liked you with a blonde. Oh, you remember? Yes. <laughs> I'm thinking of going back, but I, I don't have one. I go between ombre, <laughs> which is like. <laughs> You know, like the cool version of ombre. Is there such a thing? Yeah, <laughs> I think is ombre such a little, thing? You know, like I just, I don't know, lighter at the ends. I, I, I just feel really flat if I'm one colour. Yeah, yeah. And I can sometimes it can look that little bit, um, you know, just like a, a like a wig. Oh, you know? I never have got such thick hair. Ah. Isn't it so weird? Because you look back on photos, I was going back to my Facebook photos the other day and I had this really beautiful just brown shoulder length and I thought, like, okay, it looks really beautiful then, but maybe it's because I was yeah. like 10 years younger too. Um, I think when you've got that sharp bob, you can kind of pull off that one colour, yeah, but when you've got long, it's nice to have a little variation because it gives it movement without having to do much to it. <laughs> um, what would be your worst haircut or colour that you ever did to yourself? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I <don't> remember. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> I I don't know if you ever remember this being in, but I attempted it. I shaved one side of my hair. Yep. Remember that movement, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I looked hideous. I looked hideous. Can <laughs> yeah. I ask how old you were? She did it on the block. No, after the block. Oh. I cut my hair off short on the block, and then after that I wanted another change, so I shaved half of my head. <laughs> don't ever so do that. When don't you said I shaved half of my head, did you do it yourself? No, no. Oh, thank God. <laughs> she's quite a bit grungy, but she's not cool enough for it. <laughs> we live in Adelaide, not Melbourne. <laughs> I love it. Just tell it how it really is. Thanks, sister. <laughs> yeah, I definitely could not pull that look no, off. No. <laughs> <laughs> Mine was when I dyed my hair black. Yeah, no. That was ugh, gross. I'm, yeah, normally it's too heavy. Olive, but it made me look really anemic. Skincare product that you could not live without. Recently, I've been introduced to the Dr. Spiller range, um, and it's the collagen night cream. And every time I put that on at night time, my just skin feels amazing. And a lot of people have actually been commenting, oh, your skin looks good. Doesn't close up. <laughs> that's when you know. But that's when and, you know. Yeah, it's really, it is really nice. Um, yeah, I, I just feel as soon as I put it on, I'm like, oh, oh my yeah, skin's not nice. hydrated again. Mm. I'd go that yeah. too. Oh wow, so you're both using that. I yeah. love that. What would be the best beauty tip that someone's given you, and that sort of resonated and stayed on board? I remember when we um, up <laughs> always saying, "You've got to drink lots of water. You can have." you know, all the expensive products, but if you don't drink lots of water, then, you know, she, I remember her saying, all the supermodels, they would be drinking lots and lots of water, and that just always stuck in my head. If you want nice skin, drink lots of water. Hydration, it makes yeah, sense. I do. <laughs> yeah, that's probably, the, that's, that's always stuck with me. 
Yeah. Yeah. I don't really have anything to add to that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you were a 90s supermodel, who would you be? Oh, I'd have to be, I think, Tara Banks. Isn't she a bit sassy and a little bit like, go get you? Mm, no, I was scrolling through Instagram the other day and she popped up again. Helena Christensen. How beautiful oh. is she? And she is still rocking. Yeah. Oh Those my photos that she takes of herself in that lake, it must be near her, her house because I'm still obsessed with her. And... I'm like, those legs. I know, what the actual? <laughs> she looks just as good now as what she did back then. She's aged really well. Oh, like, so well. She drinks lots of water. And if you could have one product only in our CV lockdown, what would she be? One, not, not beauty related, just one thing. Oh, whatever, you, whatever floats your boat. Oh, it'd have to be my computer. <laughs> Mine would still have to be a good night cream because no matter what, even if you don't put makeup on during the day, which has been quite nice to let my skin have a break, um, yeah. no matter what, you still, you know, after you cleanse your face and still put that on, I don't know, there's just something nice about mm. putting it on and still look, you know, looking in the mirror and you're still glowing fresh and yeah. having that glow. Yeah, you guys both have beautiful skin. Like, beautiful. Oh, thank skin. you. I remember doing. Um, Oh, I think it was a show. I can't remember what magazine it was for, but it was definitely for a magazine, but a long time ago, and I was doing makeup, and I did you then. And this, oh. like, this is going back donkeys ago. And then I think it was for one of the um, upstarts for one of the networks. Because, oh, um, yeah, and so it's going back forever ago, but I always remember faces and part of conversations, yeah. and I was fascinated by what you guys were doing then. Oh, right. so, yeah, oh, so it's been a real pleasure. Hey, for that, it must be never before, hi. I know, but you know, like, I probably could have had pink hair, red hair, dark <laughs> hair, long hair, short hair, yeah. probably less grey, but <laughs> yeah, but I'm so grateful to, like, you know, get into your brilliant brains and beautiful minds and just, yeah, Thank share. You. Thanks for having us, it's been fun. Mm. Yeah, definitely been fun. Thank Thanks for the giggles. Yeah. <laughs> Great. Exactly. I love that. Next time we have some bubbles. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yes, we need bubbles. <laughs> Always bubbles. <Yeah. laughs> oh, I just I'm so grateful to have you on board and yeah, it's been such a nice insight into your into your world. Anytime. Thank you. For more details on Elisa and Lysandra's Alive Body Range, head over to the Beauty Boss Business website. I'm Melanie Bernicle, your host for Brilliant Brains and Beautiful Minds. Catch you next time.